You're listening to Disney Radio, Florida's in-car welcoming station. Welcome aboard, TTA travelers. Whether you're a humanoid, a robot, or an alien passenger, we hope you enjoy your trip along Tomorrowland Transit Authority's Super Skyway. You don't want to miss out on right here and now. The reason I've gathered you here today is to witness the exploration of the next great frontier, courtesy of my own incredible time machine. Okay, let's review. That is seat, seat belt, carry on item, safety strap, fear of heights, keep your hands and arms inside at all times, anything else. Yeah. W, D, w Radio. Your information station. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the WDW Radio Show, your Walt Disney World information station. I am your host, Lou Mangello, and this is show number 242 for the week of October 2nd, 2011. Walt Disney World is a place to enjoy and create lasting memories together, whether you're a family with young children, a couple, friends, or anything in between. And yes, Disney is also a great place for teens to have fun in a safe environment that may even afford them a bit of independence while on vacation. So this week, We'll talk about taking teens to Walt Disney World with a mom of teens and a teen himself. We'll discuss planning, touring, budgeting, best attractions, misconceptions, some tips, and much more, all from a parent's and a teen's perspective. I'll have a few announcements and then play more of your voicemails at the end of the show. So sit back, relax and enjoy this week's episode of the WDW Radio Show. When Walt Disney sat on a bench at Griffith Park in California, eating peanuts and watching his daughters ride a carousel, I think he saw in his mind's eye a place where families could have fun together. Mom, dad, grandparents, kids, and yes, even teenagers. And so this week, we're going to look at taking teens to Walt Disney World. Or if you're a teenager and you prefer, teens taking their parents to Walt Disney World. But since I am neither a teen, although I did play one years ago, nor a parent of a teen, and please do not mention my daughter and teenage years in the same sentence, I wanted to bring on people who are experts in those fields because I think taking a teen to Walt Disney World or going as a teen to Walt Disney World is a very unique experience. So I'm now bringing on a parent of teens and a teens, and teens matters always being of paramount importance. So ladies first, I want to welcome in Mary Albright, She is not a teen. She is a mom of teens. Mary, welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Lou. So you are a Disney fan. You've gone like 20 times, and I I applaud you. Uh, Sometimes I probably sympathize with you because you are a parent of a teenage boy and a teenage girl. Absolutely. Absolutely. Wow. (laughs) (laughs) Well, they're definitely different in their own ways. That's for sure. I was going to say, I've got uh, everything in the catalog as well. I have a young boy and a young girl, and sometimes you would never know they came from the same parent. So I can only imagine (laughs) as they become teens, how those differences become pronounced. It'll be interesting as we start talking about you taking your teens to Walt Disney World, uh, your personal experiences of that as well. I know you've taken them to the parks you've been on a cruise and you also brought them when they were young kids as well right absolutely yep we've been going since they were four and five that away brains uh teach them educate them early i say my kids started in the womb and they haven't left since so we also (laughs) wanted to bring on uh because i think it's i think we need to sort of look at this not only from a parental perspective taking teens but a teen perspective going on your own, you know, going with mom and dad or however you you go. And so uh, we were going to bring on an 18-year-old high school senior whose name is Blake Taylor, who I've got to say, coolest movie name ever. It's like Blake Taylor, 
<laughs> Disney teen, whatever. Blake, welcome to the show. Thank you. It's great to be here. And uh, you're also, you've been writing for the WDW Radio blog recently, so uh, I, I want to say thank you for that. Lots of good stuff. And again, the timing for this was really just kind of right. Mary came to me with this sort of uh, concept of talking about, uh, you know, going to Walt Disney World with a team. Because you made a great point, Mary. You know, you don't really see sort of the marketing towards teens. It's not really kind of addressed. We, You know, the Disney talks about going as couples, as family, bringing your little, you know, princess and your young boy. But you don't really sort of see the, the teen market uh, you know, marketed to directly. Yeah, you really don't. And it's unfortunate because I think that, you know, not only, you know, kids who've been, uh, you know, going since they were young, like mine have, um, but even, you know, parents who maybe, you know, maybe they thought, oh, well, you know, I should take them in that target zone, that eight to 10 year old zone. Um, and then they pass it by and think, OK, well, Disney is not for my family. We're just not going to go. They're really missing out because there are just so many things for people of all ages, including those teenagers to do. And I think that, you know, families just need to be educated on the fact that there there really are a lot of fun activities, attractions, all kinds of things um, that the teens will love. Well, I, I think, too, from a parent's perspective, taking a teen or teens, plural, presents a unique set of challenges. And I'm using air quotes as I say that because I think kids in strollers are much easier to deal with and much more portable than kids who can roam and wander and see bright, shiny objects or other bright, shiny teenagers and sort of want or need that sense of independence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, you know, I, I guess that, you know, for some parents, you know, that, that may be something um, that they are worried about, you know, that, you know, Disney World is, you know, something like 47 square miles, you know, bigger than the island of Manhattan. That's a lot of space for someone to conceptualize. Um, But they, they need to realize that, at least for me, I realize that we've been going so many times that I feel comfortable where I'm at. And I know that, um, you know, things, things aren't going to happen to my kids there. I'm completely comfortable with them uh, being in the same park with me, and not being in my immediate sight, you know, and there obviously is some judgment calls on maturity that you'd have to make with your own teenagers, you know, someone who's 14, may be completely dependable. Um, and then another 14 year old, you know, may not have good judgment yet, and you may not be comfortable with them wandering off on their own, you know, so obviously, each set of parents, you're going to have to, you're going to know your teens better than I am. And you're going to have to make that judgment call as far as you know, how much, how much freedom you're going to allow them. For myself, um, you know, I have a 14 year old and 15 year old, as we talked about, um, I'm completely comfortable with them being in the same park as I am and, um, going off and maybe doing some things that I have zero interest in doing. You know, for example, when we're at Hollywood studios, um, I do not want to be on the tower of terror. I do not want to be on rock and roller coaster. I just can't do that stuff, but they are the thrill loving types. And so, you know what, if you want to go to and do that. That's great. Check in with me at, you know, 12 o'clock or whatever time we talk about. And, um, you know, then I just let them go off and and do that. And in these days where just about everybody has a cell phone, um, you know, for me, that's, you know, that's it's easy for them to say, you know, if you can't meet me, text me. Let me know if you're running behind, if you got distracted, you know, whatever. And, um, you know, that way we keep in communication and I'm not wondering, okay, where did you go? What's going on here? Um, And, you know, it's just a way to keep in contact, but still give them that freedom to kind of, uh, you know, do their own thing and make their vacation the way that they want to be and not be attached to my hip the entire time. Right. And I think that sense of independence, I think it's important that that's sort of brought up first because, First of all, from a safety and security perspective, uh, I've always felt that nowhere else taking my family have I felt as safe, you know, because, look, if if your kids do get lost or they wander off on their own, they can't really go anywhere. They're sort of stuck inside the bubble, which is a good thing, and there's security everywhere. Look, when I was a teenager, low those many years ago, I remember staying at the Contemporary Resort and my parents letting me 
and my younger brother or a friend that I brought with me ride the monorail for hours on end late at night, just sort of going around and around. We couldn't go anywhere. There was nothing we could do. But that was just sort of our our sense of independence and having fun. And so, Blake, from a teen perspective, do you kind of feel that need or like having if you are given it, and again, I know you're under, I understand you're a little bit older, to kind of go off on your own because, yeah, maybe it, there's either things you want to do that are separate or, yeah, maybe, look, the, the cool factor is important. Is it just not as cool hanging out with mom and dad? Um, I think it's definitely important to have a little bit of independence. Obviously, not all the time um, when you're there, but maybe just a few hours on your own um, just to sort of get away from the family. Not that I don't love my family. I definitely enjoy being around them most of the time. But um, having a little mini solo trip for a few hours, um, just sort of strolling the parks is always a bit of a treat for me, I think. And let me ask you this. You've been going to Walt Disney World for a number of years, I assume. When was it? Like, what was that age when, you know, the cord was somewhat, you know, figuratively speaking, cut, and you were able to kind of start going off even a little bit on your own? And like Mary said, I know it, it varies from family to family. Um, probably the trip that we took right before my sophomore year. We had gone before that when I was in seventh grade, and that was pretty much everybody was together at all times. Um, but um, the trip, I think I was 16 at the time. Um, my parents were totally fine just letting me wander off on my own if I needed it. And especially since I'm sort of the big Disney nut, in my family, they understand from my perspective that if we're somewhere and I wanted to see the special performance of the citizens of Hollywood or something, and it was time to go and they were at somewhere else, they totally understand me just breaking away from them for a little bit to go make sure I could catch that or something like that. Right. Um, And you, you obviously knew where you were going. Yeah. And you knew you were going in the park. So you getting separated wasn't like you getting lost. You were going off to see something you wanted to do. Right. And Mary, what about for you? Again, your kids are a few years younger. They're 15, 16. Are are you at that point yet that if you're in the Magic Kingdom, maybe they can go off and do a separate attraction in that park? Or how much sort of freedom do you start giving at a certain point? Because I will tell you this, for my daughter, when she's about 35, that's when she can go off on her own. For my son, when maybe when he's 18, total double standard, but that's me being the overprotective father. Um, you laugh as if no, I'm kidding. <laughs> so. No, no, I, I'm laughing just, you know, in the comparison, you know, between yourself and my own husband when it comes to daughters. So, no, it's <laughs> it's totally cool. Um, you know, as far as, you know, freedom to go off and do their own, um, you know, do their own attraction in the same park, we're there. You know, we've probably been there since they were 13. Um, you know, but again, you know, my situation may be a little more unique than, you know, most of your listeners maybe in that we've been going so often, my kids know the parks like the back of their hand. So, you know, getting lost is not something that that's going to happen to them. Um, you know, so that my comfort level is probably, um, you know, maybe a little more out of the ordinary than normal, but, uh, you know, we even, you know, there, there have been times we normally say, you know, we're, we're Disney vacation club members and one of our home resorts is the beach club villas. And, um, that we usually stay there and there have been times where they're like, Hey mom, I want to go and, uh, listen to off kilter. And, uh, so the two of them will go and I'll say, okay, great. When are you going to come back? And or it might be, OK, great. Dad, now meet you there in X amount of time. Um, and I'm completely comfortable with them, you know, going in through the International Gateway, headed over to, uh, you know, headed over to uh, the Canada Pavilion to do something like that. Um, you know, as far as going to another park, you know, without me uh, by themselves. Yeah, not quite there. Not, you know, you know, Epcot's a different story when we're at the beach club, but you know, if they said, Hey, you know, I want to take the bus to animal kingdom by myself. Yeah. I don't know that I'm there yet. Um, <laughs> you know, just that, I mean, I, I, I trust them, you know, they're, they're, they got good heads on their shoulders, but you know, that's my comfort level is not at that point yet. But, you know, as far as within the same park, if they want to go off and do something, you know, like I said, we've already established ways to check in and routines and things of that nature. So I'm comfortable with where we are, you know, in terms of our communication plan that if they want to go off and do something in the same park, that's great. Right. And obviously now with cell, you know, every much pretty much having a cell phone, it's very easy to sort of keep track of one another. I remember, you know, 
wow, a long time ago. It was the walkie-talkies we would have in the parks. Me, I'll mm-hmm. probably, you know, put implant a chip in my kids so I can keep track <laughs> on them. <laughs> Again, you laugh as if it's not true. Um, but I wanted to also talk to, you know, it's it's one thing about when you get there and, and, and people separating and having their own sort of uh, ideas and plans and things that they want to do. But I think when we're talking about going with teens, we sort of need to take a step back first because I think there are some uh, some tips and some advice and some things to consider even before you go, uh, before you even get out uh, into the parks. And one of the things I always think about, because again, I think, and again, not having teens, I know I'm sort of uh, not speaking from personal experience, but I know as a teen, you started to feel, hey, it's not cool to go. I don't want to be on vacation with mom and dad. But I think that by including your teen in on the planning before you even start, I think is very, very important. I think, again, it gives them a sense of interest, a sense of ownership, and lets them know that, hey, the whole family is involved here. You guys will be able to do the things that you want. We're going to choose the right kind of tickets. You know, do we need to get park hoppers? So, yeah, maybe, you know, when you're 18, you could start going off to different parks and doing your own things. If maybe mom and dad want to wander world showcase, whatever it is, both of you, you know, individually, Mary and then Blake, do you guys, Mary, do you involve your teens in the planning? And Blake, uh, again, being such a big Disney fan, uh, do you involve, let me ask you this, do you involve your parents in the planning? <laughs> um, I I always ask my teens what they want to do, you know, and it's it, sometimes it goes back and forth where, you know, they may be the first one to bring up. Okay, so when are we going to sit down and make that dining plan, Mom? You know, where are we going to go to eat? You know, they're kind of... <laughs> They're 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 a little bit on the foodie side, especially my daughter, you know. But then, um, you know, they all they already have their favorite attractions in each park. And then sometimes it's 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 like, okay, so which park should we go to? You know, when? So they're very involved, you know, in in um, planning things out. Um, and they love to you know have some input, just you know, because they've been so many times, they know what they like. And um, at the same time, I can be the one to say, hey, well, you know what? There's this new thing out here. Maybe we should try that. Um, one of the things I floated on one of our last trips to them was, uh, you would do you want to try lunch with an Imagineer? And um, both my kids have uh, have said in the past that, you know, they they are considering, you know, careers in engineering. And, you know, even though Imagineering has a very broad scope, you know, I thought, hey, that would be a really nice way to talk to somebody. And what do you think about that? You know, would that be interesting? And they both were really excited. And so we ended up doing something like that. Um, and uh, and they really did enjoy it. You know, now had, had I just thrown it out there or just planned it and didn't tell them, I could tell you for sure that my son would have been a little irritated because he's one of those kids who's like, why do people not tell me these things, mom? You know, why do you not tell me these things? He He's one that... I like to be involved. I like to be in the know. And, um, you know, so I definitely like to have them as involved as possible because I'm one of those people that likes to be in the know, too. And I, I hate it when I don't know what's going on. So, you know, I try to be as as open to the planning as possible without delaying. You know, if people can't make a decision. Well, then, you know, the buck stops with mom and then I get to make those decisions. So if you want input, you got to make sure you give it to me. And Blake, are you uh, are you very involved on your side with the planning for your vacations? Yes, I'm very involved. Um, as I said, I'm sort of like the big Disney fan in my family. So usually, um, my parents initially plan like um, the actual ticketing and hotel accommodations because you know children aren't allowed to make those sort of reservations. So they're usually responsible for um, finding the best deals or whatever for reservations and whatnot. And then I'm usually the one that takes it from there as far as um, our touring strategies and where we are, what time. And, of course, I'm not the only one involved in that. I like to make it a collaborative process amongst the whole family. Um, I usually ask everybody for a top five list of what they want to do more than anything else on the trip. You know, if you couldn't do anything else, what's the five things that you have to do um, that you'd be disappointed if you didn't get to experience this trip? And I usually make it a top priority to... um, to infuse those things into our vacation plans. And then from there, just sort of um, strategizing for what's the best thing to do at what time. And I'm sort of the one that plans our actual itinerary. 
See, out of the mouth of babes. Blake, that's brilliant. Making everybody and giving them something fun to do, like putting together their own top five list. So you know Mm -hmm. you got to hit those top things for each of them. Uh, I think it's a really good idea, and I think it's a great tip to sort of pay forward for those people who are planning, whether you're going with your teenager, with your young kids, with grandma, grandpa, whoever it is, because obviously every sort of generation, everybody has their own separate interest. Um, Something else I had thought about too, especially, again, going with teens and then the planning phase, excuse me, is, and we'll talk about when to go, but where to go. I think where you stay is very important. And I think, and I've always been a proponent of staying on property, being of paramount importance, because that will afford you that freedom and that flexibility to take a monorail, to take a boat, to take a bus, to walk, whatever it might be, back to your rooms or back to the pool or meet up with your family later on. Uh, And I think you should look at things depending on the size of your family and things like suites or adjoining rooms. I know as I was getting older as a teenager, my mom and dad would let me take uh, a friend of mine. I had my younger brother and we would sometimes get adjoining rooms and it gave us the kids a little bit of sense of freedom. It gave us a sense of independence. It gave my parents probably a sense of sanity. Um, But I think where you also choose is important as well. Things like, you know, being on the monorail loop or the Epcot resorts where you can walk or boat to Epcot and Hollywood Studios. Um, The type of room, you know, maybe it's something if you have a bigger family like a deluxe villa, you know, if you're able to do something like that, everybody kind of gets their own space. Maybe the kids want to sleep in a little bit. Um, you've got the amenities so that they can, you could have breakfast there. and it, it's, it could be a cost saving thing as well. Is that something that you guys take into consideration, Barry, when you're planning your trip? Uh, again, you guys being DVC members, um, that obviously plays a big factor in it too. But I have to think that where you stay is as important as, you know, a lot of these other things, even before you, you hit the ground in the parks. Yeah. You know, where, where we stay is an important thing, you know, and um, we, uh, we always get uh, a villa that has a full kitchen. That's just something that's important to me um, and has become more important to my kids because, you know, we're not commando touring people. You know, it's it's uh, that's just not the way that we vacation. You know, we like to take our time. We like to um, enjoy our vacation. Um, and for us, that means, yeah, being able to get up and make breakfast, you know, maybe some days it's just, uh, you know, pop tarts, but maybe some days it's, uh, let's make some cinnamon rolls, you know, in the oven and, um, you know, have a relaxing breakfast before we get up and hit the ground running. Um, but also, you know, and, and I may be tooting my own horn here just a little bit while they do have their favorites, you know, uh, among some Disney restaurants, they equally enjoy, um, having mom cook dinner while we're on vacation because you don't have to wait in line. Even if you've got an ADR, you know, there's still some waiting to be in involved, you know, before you're um, seated. And then, you know, if you're not at a buffet, then you're waiting for your food to be prepared. And, you know, if you're, if you're at dinner time and you have been on your feet all day, um, it's just, it's just more waiting. And sometimes it's nice to be able to just head back to the room, sit on the couch and watch a little TV and, you know, have mom make some spaghetti and meatballs and some garlic bread. You know, it, sometimes those simple meals um, are are really a godsend when you're on vacation. So um, that's an important part for us, you know, and you mentioned the space, you know, for people to sleep in. And that's, you know, we're, we're more morning people, though, you know, sleeping in does happen. Um, but I think it's more uh, having the extra sleeping area for themselves away from their parents uh, so that, you know, no snoring may wake anybody up. Uh, you know, it, it's, uh, it's good for them to be able to sleep in um, if they choose to. But then also, you know, if I get up and I want to go, um, you know, grab myself, uh, you know, some breakfast before other people get up, I can do that without having to tiptoe around um, and try and be quiet. Um, you know, so this, the space works out, um, you know, to be a, a big deal for us all the way around. That being said, um, you know, you can, not everybody can get into a villa or that might not be a, um, a feasible option. Um, you know, there have been times where we have done, as you said, you know, adjoining rooms 
um, so that, you know, they can have that space. Um, but if you're looking for a, you know, a, a different option, whether it's, you know, budgetary or location, um, you know, some of those moderate resort rooms and even some of the value rooms, um, are still a good option if you have, um, if you have teenagers. Right. And so. there's also the, the family suites over at All Star is another great Absolutely. option as well too. And I think, you know, not only about the space and, and first of all, I love, I, I was hoping you were going to say pop tarts and cinnamon rolls for dinner as well. But having the kitchen, it's all about being sugared up. Um, having the kitchen and the space is certainly a factor that plays in. But I think about other things as well, too, and why being on property is important. Having thing like a great pool. A lot of the resort pools are not only a great place and a great way to sort of take a break during the day, but I think for teenagers, and, and Blake, you could jump in if you agree or disagree, I think the pool sometimes could be a bit of a social hub for some of the teenagers, depending on where you stay, um, you know, if there's marinas and watercraft there, that gives them a sense to being able to go out and they can, you know, take out a sea racer or do whatever. I'm a total geek. Um, I, you know, the arcades, again, it's something fun. It's not very expensive. They can do it off on their own right at your resort. It's a social thing there as well, too. Um, you know, all those things sort of play into things that are taking place outside the theme parks and the freedom and the flexibility it gives to a teenager. So, Blake, when you guys stay on property, do you find that you use a lot of the resort amenities either as a place to just kind of get away or wander or, you know, dare I say, go out and try and meet other teens who are on vacation? Um, well, my family is a family of six. So we usually go with a adjoining room at a value resort because sort of the way we look at it is two rooms at a value resort is give or take about the same as one room at a moderate resort. And while we're there, we want to make the most of our time in the parks as we can. So um, staying at a moderate resort might mean a shorter trip than if we got um, two rooms at a value resort. Um, so... And we need two rooms because they won't allow you to have more than four people in each guest room or whatever. So um, I guess for us, the resort is sort of more of a place to rest our heads at night and have our little day break. Um, but the adjoining rooms, I guess, does give you a sense of independence as a teen. I don't really look for, um, I guess, social opportunities that much while I'm on vacation. Um, but I definitely think pools are a good factor in um, determining where you stay and stuff like that. And also along the same lines of budgeting and giving teens a little more independence than you would your elementary school kids or your preschoolers. Um, and also relating to budgeting, um, something that we've gotten to do lately is we normally don't go with the dining plan unless it's offered for like free, like it is now in the fall. Um, but usually everybody every day gets their own money envelope from our parents. It has $20 in it. And we can spend that however we want to, but we're not getting any more money from them for dining. That's our dining envelope. We can use it however we want to. Um, we can roll over to the next day if we want to, but um, that sort of helps us, you know, learn in a little lesson in money management as well as um, it helps when we're off on our own. We don't have to worry about um where we're getting money to eat or being away from our parents is okay because we already have our dining money and whatnot. Yeah. And I think that's a great point too, because Mary, I was going to ask you about budgeting. And, and again, we talked about sort of money saving tips about when you go on vacation because teens are growing and they have a tendency to eat a lot, but mm -hmm. how do you deal with them and their budget? So if you are staying on property, do you give them a key to the world card with charging privileges um, do you give them that sense of responsibility and just pray that when you get your bill at the end, <laughs> you don't see, you know, <laughs> uh, you know, some sort of crazy charge on there? Mm -hmm. Um, I do give them the ability to charge, but we have their rules and, uh, the, the primary rule is, um, you know, you, they come with their own money, you know, money that, that I've either allotted for them, um, or that they've earned, um, you know, through chores or, you know, doing their little side jobs or whatever. Um, and the rule is, is that uh, I'm going to, I go down and I check the, um, the room account every night. And then if they've charged something, 
then it's there, you know, I'll have that report and I'll say, okay, it's your job to give me the cash then. If you didn't pay for it with your cash, if you're going to use your card, it's your job to pay for the cash because you can see what's been charged to what card on your room account. So, you know, I give them that flexibility if they want to do that. Um, you know, and knowing that they're, and, and, and again, because we've gone as often as we have, you know, these rules are well established. So it's not like it's something that's completely brand new. Um, but that is something that you could do if you wanted, if you didn't, if you weren't worried about them carrying a lot of cash around, you know, um, you could give them that opportunity um, to charge to the room and then have that accountability, you know, at the end of the day to just go down to, you know, the concierge and print out something, you know, print out your, your, um, uh, you know, your room charge bill at that time and, and take care of it that way. Um, but there are a lot of different ways that you can do that. Uh, you know, if you, if you wanted to, um, make them accountable, but that's, that's what's worked for us. Um, sometimes they u- will use their card and sometimes they won't, you know, they may make some charges, um, or they, they, there's something about having the cash in your hand. I think it just kind of makes you feel like, Ooh, I'm paying for this myself and oh, I have money. And so, you know, sometimes they will, sometimes they won't, but I like to give them that flexibility so that, you know, if they are out without me and, um, Maybe they're hungry or they decide that, you know, even if we were going to plan on eating in the room, but they decided they wanted to stay, um, if they wanted to, you know, stop somewhere quick service and get something great, you know, and again, with, you know, the communication that we've set up in terms of either giving me a call or sending me a text, um, you know, when you have that plan in place and, and my kids are really good about communicating, you know, there's, there's, uh, you know, not a lot of, I'm not talking to you, mom, <laughs> you know, <laughs> so, um, you know, I don't really have, uh, I, I don't have problems with them communicating with us when we're on vacation. So, um, but again, that, that's been something that we've established. So it's already kind of ingrained, uh, but it's not something that, um, you know, if you wanted to give it a try, um, I, I don't think that it would be difficult to implement if that was something, you know, a family with teens was going to consider. Right. And you're like a casino. Like you can take out as much of a marker as you like, but you got to settle up at the end of the day. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And I can see certainly there, there's something about having that, that cash in hand because you know, Blake, exactly how much you can spend and you, you see it there. And there is not that maybe the temptation of just, you know, the credit cards, like not having money. It's just, I still think like a teenager. Yeah, I just keep charging it and I'll worry about it, you know, when the bill comes <laughs> later on. But something else I was thinking about, too, when we're talking about, you know, when we're going and how to go and how to do all these things is school, Uh, because not everybody is, you know, able to maybe go on vacation when school is out. And I will tell you that as a kid um, and growing up, oftentimes my parents would take me out of school. And now I know a lot of people do not like that. They don't agree with it. But because of what my parents schedule was, that's what we had to do. And I was given homework in advance, and I know I'm seeing as time goes on, teachers don't like having to, and I completely understand, don't like having to sort of make special homework assignments or catch up or or give it to them in advance. Uh, But is going while school is on an option? And again, I know I think this changes depend on the grade level. Look, if I take my, you know, six-year-old out of school, it hopefully is not going to preclude her from going to Harvard. Um, but if you take your teenager out of school, it's a different story because of the grade level and, and what classes they're taking and what may be coming up, uh, especially Blake, you know, if you're a junior or a senior and you're thinking about things like SATs and colleges and whatnot, um, it, is school, does, does Blake, did, have you ever gone as a teenager and been taken out of school and had to deal with either the schoolwork beforehand or playing catch up afterwards? Yes, um, last December I was out of school for three days while we went, um, and I definitely, like you said, there's a big difference in, as you grow older, having to be more responsible for your own workload. Um, I mean, like in elementary school, usually the teachers are real nice about it, you know, giving you a packet of all the worksheets or whatever way ahead of time so that by the time you actually leave for your trip, you're already done with all your work that needs to get done, and it's probably not that much work anyway, but, um definitely especially last year it's more like it's your own responsibility to find every teacher that you missed class for and find time to make up a test or the work or whatever on your own the teacher's not going to hand it to you on a silver platter and say 
okay, here's what you miss. It's more of your responsibility to, um, um, like my school system, it has, we have an online grading system where you can look online. Everybody has their own account, and you can see what your grades are for each assignment. So I think for me, it was more like going on that online program, seeing what I missed, and asking the teacher when I could make that up for every class that I had. And that was a lot to deal with because even though we only missed three days, it's still a significant amount of work to make up. I mean, I know the night before I left, I had tried to get as much makeup work um, ahead of time as I could, but, you know, teachers, sometimes they don't know what they're doing the next day. So um, I stayed up real late the night before we left trying to get work done. And that, of course, wasn't very good because then I'm already behind on sleep and we're getting ready to take a vacation. And even though it's a vacation, you know, at Disney, you're sort of on your feet all day long. So I was already exhausted by the time we got there, really exhausted by the time the trip was over. And then I had to come home to this whole big mound of makeup work that I still had to get done. And I definitely think it's always worth it in the end. Like, I'm definitely glad we went. Um, but I definitely prefer going when school is out. Yeah, I'm sure it's much easier on you, on your family, certainly your, your teacher's as well too. Mary, have you ever taken your kids out for any sort of, you know, other than just maybe a day on the weekend here or there, but an extended period of time to go to Walt Disney World? And if so, what is that experience been like for you and for them and even how the teachers responded? Yeah, I'll I'll echo a lot of what Blake just talked about. You know, when they were younger, um, it was, it was definitely a lot easier. Um, My favorite time has always been Uh, to go in early December. And so for a long time, that's what we did, you know, with some uh, variations here and there. Um, And, you know, at the time when we started traveling, I had, uh, I was a different place in my life where the job that I had December was my slow time. And so I could, that's the time that I could take uh, to go on vacation and, you know, just ended up working out really well. As I've gotten older, you know, I I still talk to them about, okay, you know, do you still want to go? How do you feel about school? Things of that nature. And um, we're now, we, last year we went uh, right after Thanksgiving and I had talked to them about it because both of them, you know, were in um, at the time, let's say eighth and ninth grade. And um, so it was, you know, just a little different. And, you know, how do you feel? Do you want to take on the homework that you're going to have when you come back? And it was more a concern for my son than my daughter. You know, he is, he's the one that tends to, he's, he's more of the, the one that really worries about things like that. She's a little bit more, you know, even keeled in, in terms of tackling things of that nature. He initially said, yes, I'm okay with it. That's great. Um, we went, we came home. He had a lot of work and, and he went, got through it. Um, but, you know, the stress that it put on him when we got back just kind of solidified in my mind that, okay, we're done with that now. And we're not going to be able to do those family vacations um, for the foreseeable future at that time of year. And so, you know, while disappointing for me, because I, I dearly love to go with my entire family at that time of year, I can't, I, I'm not going to put them through that stress just for my own personal gratification. And so, you know, while we have gone at that you know we have gone and I have taken them out of school and for the most part you know the the schools have been understanding um, maybe not always as cooperative as I would have wanted in terms of giving work ahead of time but um, it is hard because there is so much more work and responsibility um, when you are a teenager in school that you know we've now decided we can't do that anymore at least not not for the foreseeable future. Um, you know, so it, it, it can vary, you know, there, I know a lot of people who, um, you know, don't have to deal with that issue if they're in, um, because they're in a homeschooling environment, so they can kind of go whenever they want. But, you know, for those of us who, who are in, um, the public school system, um, once you get into those teenage years, it's kind of hard to deviate from those school breaks, um, and not stress out your teen. Yeah. And I think that there's another factor about being taken out of school, Mary, that maybe, you know, Blake can can relate to more because when you come out, when you're being pulled out of school or you're you're taking you're going out of school to go on vacation and you're telling other kids in school that you're leaving to go to Disney World, 
I think that, you know, teens sometimes may not feel that, hey, going to Disney World is not the coolest place in the world. And I think when you're in that teenage time period, it's important to think and look and, and act cool, of which I failed at all three when I was a teenager. But so, Blake, let me ask you, you know, do you see that at all? Do you ever see, you know, from people who we talk as adults about getting it or not getting it? Do you ever see that saying, hey, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be out for a couple of days because I'm going on vacation and people say, where are you going? And they say Disney World. And they're like, Disney World? It's Dumbo and Cinderella. That's not, you know, is it is there that cool factor or not cool factor about going to Disney? Um, my school might be in the abnormal as far as sort of what you were saying because I think, I mean, I've just never seen somebody that was, you know, oh, I have to go to Disney World with my family. I haven't really seen that. I think everybody sort of, you know, views it as, you know, oh, Disney World, like, you know, the the world's biggest playground, I guess you could say. Um, But, no, I haven't really, I mean, I think other Disney properties, like, you know, Disney Channel or Disney movies are generally looked at as not being, you know, the cool thing for teenagers as more as they are for, you know, like, elementary school kids. I think the actual parks are sort of viewed as um, sort of, I guess, cooler, you could say, than other Disney properties. But, yeah, I I haven't seen it being a factor. And I think you're right. I think that that's changed over the years, too, because over time, especially, you know, remember, when I was a kid, it was just the Magic Kingdom. And over time, there has been so, there have been so many more additions and a lot more cool attractions, a lot more thrill rides, and maybe let's talk about that. Some of those best attractions for teens, the one that you as a teenager think, yeah, these are ones if you are a teenager and you're concerned about going or if, if you're about to get thrown into a locker and you need to make your argument as to why <laughs> Disney World is cold, not that I'm speaking from experience, <laughs> but um, some of those those best attractions for teens, you know, let's sort of start off with the Magic Kingdom and, and kind of work our way around. Um, I think the Magic Kingdom actually, you know, is sort of perceived as the kiddie park, you know, it's my favorite park, and usually when I tell people that, they're like, oh, really? It's, you know, it's viewed as more of, for families with younger children, but I think it actually has the best variety, because, yes, you do have the rides that are more geared towards the smaller set, like most of the Fantasyland stuff, um, but then you also have some of the best, you know, thrill rides in the entire resort, and the ones that have the most excitement like Space Mountain and Splash Mountain and of course you know the classics that everybody knows about like the Haunted Mansion and Pirates of the Caribbean um so I think that's probably the park that's the most well-rounded and that the entire family can have a good time at not that you know the whole family couldn't have a good time at the other parks but I think the Magic Kingdom um sort of covers all the bases better than the others and for places like Epcot and Hollywood Studios is it the things like the thrilling rides, the the high energy rides like Mission Space and Test Track, even Soarin' or you know Mary would run away screaming, but things like Tower of Terror and Rock and Roller Coaster <laughs> are those the ones that, as you as a teenager, really are the most attractive to you? Um, I think for the majority of teens, yes. For me, I just like a genuinely good classic Disney attraction. Like my favorite out of anything there is Mickey's Still Heart Magic. I think for most teens, yes, they're looking for the most thrills and the most excitement. And I think for most people that I've talked to that are around my age, they say that Epcot is their favorite part. Um, I think partly because World Showcase is a big factor. Mm. Um, Just going around, getting a sampling of different things from different countries. And also, it might have to play into, you know, seeing in the flesh what they've learned about in history or social studies class at school and getting to experience that firsthand for themselves. I think it's a pretty neat experience. Um, yeah. I, I agree. And that's always been sort of my justification too. And, you know, sort of going back to the idea of coming out of school, I would always say, and I think, and I mean this sincerely is that if you do come out of school and this is a, we, we've talked about the top 10 educational opportunities in Walt Disney world in the past. I think there are, I think there is a way to not only take what you've learned in school and see it, uh, in, in sort of a more practical sense, whether you're learning about American history in Liberty Square or Frontierland, 
I'm going to date myself by calling it, you know, civics or world history or whatever, by going over to uh, World Showcase, you know, physics, math, science, whatever it might be, you can apply what you've learned here. You could also learn new things by coming to Walt Disney World. But I think, too, even beyond the theme parks themselves, there is a lot more to do attraction-wise. So I think teams would enjoy things like going to places like Typhoon Lagoon or Blizzard Beach or mini golfing or just even being dropped off or taking a bus in downtown Disney and just kind of wandering around there. Are there, and Blake and then Mary, are there many, any one kind of overlooked experience that you might want to say, hey, if you're a teenager and still think Disney World's for kids or, or you know, if you're a mom trying to encourage your teenager, say, hey, there is stuff for you to do. What's that one overlooked experience, Blake and then Mary, that you'd point out to a teen? Um, I think maybe interventions at Epcot, um, because I think if you would ask me the question five years ago, I might have said Disney Quest, but I think that's sort of outdated at this point as far as, you know, what the sort of technology that teens are used to. But I think interventions sort of takes that concept and keeps it current with its new exhibits and whatnot, um, particularly the sum of all thrills, which would be the creator and roller coaster. Um, my brother did that. He's, um, he's a current sophomore. He did that last year and he just thought that was the coolest thing ever to build his own roller coaster and then ride it himself. Um, then also at the same time, I think if you have sort of the stereotypical moody teenager, um, you might want to, um, you know, surround them with attractions that no matter who you are, no matter how crabby you are, you cannot leave that attraction without um, having a smile on your face. And I think the number one thing to do that is the hoopty doo review. Um, probably not the number one thing that you would think of with teens, but um, we did that last year. That was just the best thing ever. I, don't, I do not think you can leave that auditorium without, you know, tapping your toes and having a smile on your face. And I think with teens, that's what parents are looking for most. You know, how can I make my teen happy? And I think... Um, it's goofy, it's cheesy, but it's just, it's a lot of fun. Blake, I'm going to tell you, by you pulling out hoop de doo review, my respect for you is just skyrocketed exponentially. <laughs> I love that, because as a kid, you know, you think teens like, oh, you got to ride Dinosaur, and you got to ride this, and you got to be cool. You pull out hoop de doo review as a must-do, so <laughs> kudos to you as the overlooked Thank teen you. experience. Mary, what about for you? Um, overlooked teen, you know, he hit a, he hit a, a couple of things that I was thinking about. Uh, both of my kids really enjoy the sum of all thrills ever since that came out, you know, that has been a must do for them. You know, really who can, who can top, you know, making your own roller coaster. I mean, that's just gotta be the coolest thing. Again, I will not ride with them because they choose the most extreme option every single time, but, um, you know, they truly do love that. Um, you know, I was going to say, uh, I was going to mention the Kim Possible activities at uh, at Epcot because you know who, who can who can turn away, even though it's 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 a little cheesy, um, but just seeing how the Imagineers have hidden all those different clues throughout the World Showcase and all of those different adventures, um, my uh, my daughter in particular, you know, when we first heard about that, she said, let's do them all. So we spent a whole day doing them all, <laughs> and, <laughs> and, she, and it was it was fun. It was very very fun, um, and I think you know going back to Magic Kingdom, you know, some again some of these things that you may think the teenagers could really care less about. Um, don't under, don't underestimate the power of riding the teacups. You know, the magic teacups with your kids, um, especially when their whole goal is to make you as dizzy as possible. Um, you know, both of mine are like, come on, mom, come on, mom. And they spend the entire time turning that wheel, trying to get it to go as fast as they possibly can and see, OK, does mom tip over sideways when she gets out? Uh, you know, so there's a little bit of entertainment there. And I'll tell you that one of their absolute favorite things, whether it's with me and my husband or by themselves, if the stars align for them to ride Big Thunder Mountain Railroad in the dark and in the rain, they want to be there. <laughs> we were there during um, uh, a not so scary Halloween party one night and it was pouring. And of course, nobody was on 
Big Thunder. And they're like, let's go, because they love it. Well, it was raining, and it was dark, and they came off, and they let's do it again, and again, and again, and again. I don't even remember how many times it was, but every time we sit down to plan a trip, they remember that. They're like, hey, do you think it's going to rain? If it rains, Mom, we need to go to Magic Kingdom so we can ride Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. So, you know, it's some sometimes those memories that they make for themselves that they just enjoyed – uh, you know, tends to be some of that stuff where, okay, only a teenager is going to think that this is fun. So um, I'm trying to think of something else that you guys haven't talked about. You, you hit a lot of the, a lot of the good things. Um, you know, I know that mine do, they do enjoy, um, you know, a lot of the typical, uh, uh, you know, thrill ride type things, but they enjoy those Disney classics too. You know, they really do enjoy Philhar Magic. That's something my son always asked to go to see. Um, and of course, you know, you have to get on pirates every so often, you know, just to kind of reinvigorate yourself. And they are completely jazzed about going on star tours, uh, to see, um, all the new, uh, iterations that you can experience. Um, well, let me you ask know. you, let me ask you the really important question then, because we, we've talked about sort of touring the parks, obviously touring mm -hmm. with kids of other age ranges and a solo or, or a couple very different from the pace to the attractions to, you know, what do you get fast passes for? Do you separate? Do you meet up later? And again, it, mm -hmm. it seems like everyone sort of judges it based on their teen, their ages, their maturity level, their level of responsibility. Um, but it, it, you are able to sort of separate and meet up later on. And I think a lot of people sometimes will separate and they meet up later for the most important part of the day or the evening. And that's eating and that's <laughs> dining. Uh, it, are there any sort of special considerations or when you're planning with your teen or are there restaurants that you find the teens love going to, you know, uh, and again, going back to hoop de doo I think that's awesome. But mm -hmm. uh, places they like eating, do you want to stay away from character meals? Do you, Blake, let yourself be a kid again and, you know, run around with, with Pooh and friends at, at Crystal Palace? Mary, any sort of special considerations dining wise and then you, Blake? Well, you know, the, the the tough part about dining with teens at Disney is that they're considered adults. So, you know, it, it's a little more expensive proposition when you're when you're doing that advanced planning. So, you know, if if um, you're looking at some of those table service or buffet meals, um, then the cost is something that you have to take into account when you're planning. And, um, you know, so you can you can decide if there's a dining plan that works for you or not. Um, you know, that that's a personal decision that each person has to take into account. For me, um, we do kind of mix, we mix in some table service meals with, with eating in the room. Um, and I, you know, part of the planning, I do involve them. Where do you want to eat? What do you want to do? Um, and I'll tell you, Crystal Palace is a must do. It is always on the must do list to have breakfast at Crystal Palace. That's kind of our family tradition to do that at some point. Um, as far as do we have to do character meals all the time? No, they have they have some things that they enjoy. Um, you know, Crystal Palace being one, they also enjoy the Garden Grill, which I think is one of those you know one of those often overlooked areas. Um, they they enjoy the food there. They enjoy the um, the character interaction. You know, so it's just kind of something that everybody loves. But um, they also you know just to kind of take a twist on 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 food um they they really did and we, we have gone during the food and wine festival and they are a little they are they tend a little on the foodie so they they love um when we we're when we were able to go at that time um to try all those different things um you know and just experience all those those different types of uh foods that uh, that they put on for that so um and, and here I am, you know, I, I completely lost my train of thought. That's okay, because I wanted to, I just want to thank you for raising your kids right. <laughs> and we're going to talk about special events in a second, but but real quick, um, Blake, dining-wise, are there any sort of restaurants that either you, Beyond Hoop to Do, that you like, or you say, hey, if, you, if, you are, if you're bringing a teen and they're kind of maybe on the fence, they would love the experience here, or the food? Um, I think... For a lot of teens, as far as character dining, especially if they aren't really that familiar with, you know, Disney characters, and it might be their first time, I think a lot of the fur characters might be a little awkward because they don't really know how to interact with them that well. They might not really get in the pantomime style. But if you still want to do a character meal, 
and you have teams, I would go with 1900 Park Fair at the Grand Floridian, which, again, like the hoop you do, is not something that you would initially think of when you think of teams. But um, they do have the face characters that have the license to make fun of you, you know what I'm saying? At breakfast, they have the Mad Hatter, and then at dinner, they have Cinderella's stepsisters. And they sort of have that sort of creative license to mess around with you or poke fun at you um, because it's totally in character with them. And I think, um, especially with teens, sort of, you're able to hit it off well with them. Um, like, for instance, my brother, he's a big football guy, and he totally had the best time with the Mad Hatter. They just went back and forth all morning long. Um, the Mad Hatter visited our table several times just to come and talk again to my brother. Um, I mean, it was totally just senseless jokes and making fun of each other the whole time, but it was lots of fun, and that was one of his favorite times the whole trip. And I think you make a great point, and one of the things that, that I wanted to mention was, again, it, whether it's, and look, I think a lot of us who are here and who are probably listening, there's probably not a con- lot of convincing that has to happen for our teens because we're raising them right and we're raising them around Disney. But there are things like that that you can, when they get there, make them understand, which is it's okay. It is okay to be a kid again. It's okay to do all those kind of things because chances are you're never going to see any of those people again. Of course, I usually end up seeing those people again and when I act like a kid, but that's okay for for the most part. So it's okay if the big 18-year-old football player or wrestler or lacrosse player wants to get up and joke around with the characters. And I think you also mentioned too food and wine festival, flower and garden festival, Star Wars weekends. There's always something maybe that they can enjoy on some of those special uh, events and so as well. The other thing, I think the other opportunity that Disney affords, you know, are for things that parents and kids can do together, whether it's a dad and son, mother, daughter, because again, real life every day, everybody's so busy, you know, it's school and it's work and it's after school and all these kind of activities are, that are going on. Uh, and sometimes it does take something like a, a trip to Disney to allow you to spend some of that time together. And I think things like the special tours or even something as simple as fishing or if it's a Richard Petty experience, the going to the spa for a Manny Petty, whatever, with your daughter. I know friends that their yearly pilgrimage includes scuba diving over at the Living Seas. There's parasailing, sea racers, sort of whatever it is. I think there's a great opportunity there to really connect with your teenagers and teenagers to connect with their parents as well uh, with some of those special individual things that you can do either collectively as a family or sort of even breaking away. Again, you know, the, the mother and her daughters or the father and his sons, whatever it is, you know, you should do it at home, but sometimes you don't get a chance to. Here you've got a great uh, opportunity to, uh, you know, go ahead and do that. Uh, have you guys, Mary, have you done that with any of your kids? And, and Blake, have you done that with, with your parents at all? Uh, I have done that with uh, with my kids. My husband and I actually, we, there have been plenty of times where um, we've gone in different directions with one or the other of the kids. You know, sometimes, you know, he's off with my son and I'm with my daughter or it's vice versa. It kind of just depends on what's going on. Um you know, for example, uh, my daughter and I went to afternoon tea at the Grand Floridian uh, by ourselves. And the boys just kind of were, yeah, not for us. So they ended up going to Magic Kingdom and just wandering around the park doing stuff together. Um, at that time, uh, there's been times where uh, I know that I went on one of the Surrey bikes with my son while my husband and daughter, you know, they lounged at the pool. So, you know, there definitely are times where we have done that, you know, just one-on-one, you know, with each of our kids. And and you're right, there are a ton of opportunities, um, you know, to do that, whether it's a special event or, you know, just just hanging out together. So, Blake, what about you? Um, Anything special you've done with your parents or your, your you know, mom or dad? Yeah, um, I sort of inherited my Disney fandom from my mom. She grew up, um, she lived in Winter Park, which is right outside of Orlando, when Disney World opened, actually. So um, all throughout my childhood, she had sort of hyped up the Keys to the Kingdom tour. Um, you had to be 16 to take it, and that was sort of a big, I guess, 
rite of passage, you could say, for me, because, you know, she had hyped it up for all these years. She said when I was going to turn 16, she was going to take me on it. And um, we actually went down for my 16th birthday. The we, It was a trip for the whole family, but um, I turned 16 that week, and then we took the tour a few days after that. And um, that was a great experience, not only, you know, to see all the behind-the-scenes stuff of the Magic Kingdom, but also a great um experience that I'll have with my mom that I'll remember always. Um, and that was sort of cool for us as Disney fans to sort of see all the behind the scenes stuff. And then afterwards, the rest of the trip, being able to point out, you know, to the rest of the family, you know, like, oh, we know what's behind there or in an attraction. We know how that works or something like that. Um, so that was a very cool experience. And compared to the other tours, I think it's $65 and it's five to five and a half hours. And in comparison to the other tours, that's a real bargain, I think. And, and I specifically wanted to bring up doing some of those experiences and, and making the time for those kind of things with your parents or a parent or, or whatever it might be uh, as we start to wrap up specifically because I wanted to share my number one tip or my number one piece of advice. And I want to ask you, Mary, and then Blake to do yours as well. And my number one tip is that I encourage and insist and beg all of you to make time with your teens and teens make time with your parents because I love Walt Disney World not because of my love of the attractions or the history or the details or, yeah, the food, but, it, but it's because of the memories that I made there with my family. And parents, don't be upset. If they say, hey, it's, it's too cool, I don't want to be with you, and they need to go off on their own, they are going to come back around. You know, it's sort of that big circle of life. And kids, it is cool to be with your mom and dad. And you might not think so while you're there, but I, I promise you, years later, you will look back on these times incredibly fondly like I and so many other people do. So, you know, enjoy that time together. Be a kid again, take pictures with characters, act goofy, be the Griswolds and get the Mickey ear hats or whatever it might be. Indulge your parents just a little bit. And parents, you know, uh, and I, I fall victim to it as well. Do as I say, not as I do. You know, put down the iPhone, put down the BlackBerry. This is your time to create those very special memories with your kids and with your family because uh they will never sometimes come around again. You don't know when you'll have that opportunity again. So uh, Mary and then Blake, do you guys have sort of one final tip for going with or going as a team to Walt Disney World? Yeah, I guess my, my final words on that um, are to parents is, uh, you know, they want to act like a kid again. It's hard enough being a teenager um, the way the world is right now. All the responsibilities that, that, my kids have are vastly different from when I was a teenager. Um, they want to act like a kid again. They want to, um, you know, to, to kind of put the world behind them when they go on vacation and believe it or not, mom and dad, they really like to be with you. They may not act that way all the time. Um, but once you get there, they do want to spend time with you and they, they do get that, um, making memories, with their family, experiencing things with their family. They do want those things. So make sure you talk to them and uh, involve them in the planning and you'll find that you will have an enjoyable Disney vacation with your teenagers. Right, and I totally agree with that. Sort of along the same lines, I think the biggest thing for me whenever I visit Disney World is to make sure that I totally remove myself from everything else that's going on. I don't bring any schoolwork actually to Disney with me. Um, I leave my computer at home. Of course, I have my cell phone because it's necessary to, you know, have contact whenever you're away from your family for a little bit. But I try not to, you know, text friends or anything too much um, while I'm there. And I think it's just when you're there, you really are in another world, and it's important to stay in that world and not have any outside intrusions Um damper your vacation and I think something I've noticed especially the jump from middle school to high school is a lot of my peers have started to have a little bit of nostalgia for their childhood memories for this you know sense of being a kid again and I think when you're at Disney with your family you act like you're five years old and it's totally okay to act like you're five years old 
because everybody around you is acting the same way. I mean, if you were anywhere else, it would be absurd and insane to, you know, wear a big green goofy hat with large goofy ears hanging off the top of your head. But there it's, you know, it's normal. And that's what I love so much about it. You can be the child that you were and it's completely okay with everybody else around you. And and that's it. And that's all about sort of getting and understanding and letting yourself being wrapped up in that Disney magic that we kind of talk about all the time. And, And you're right. Be a kid again and enjoy those simple pleasures and look back, find that photo that you guys took on your first vacation at Walt Disney World and go back and recreate it again and again each time that you go. It's a great, simple way to kind of remember and sort of build on those memories and just allow yourself to be immersed in that experience and and that quality time with your family because that really is what it's all about. It's not about rides. It's not about food or shows or whatever it is. It's about the time that you spend and, and sort of bringing it all the way back to Walt again. That's what he wanted when he sat on that bench in Griffith Park. Uh, That's what I think he looks down and still wants and he enjoys seeing uh, even today in Walt Disney World. So Mary Albright, Mary Albright, the mom of teens and Blake Taylor, the teen. I want to thank you guys for coming on today, sharing your thoughts and your insights and uh, and sage words of wisdom. And yes, Blake, go see the Hoopty Doo review. (laughs) Thank you. Uh, Also, be sure and come by the WDW Radio blog. Check out some of uh, Blake's great articles and blog posts there. I'll link to a couple of them in this week's show notes. Guys, thank you again. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Thank you. That's going to do it for this week's show. Thanks so much for taking the time and tuning in this and every week. Please come by the website over at www.radio.com. There you can leave your comments or thoughts or best tips about taking a teen or going as a teen to Walt Disney World by clicking on the podcast link and show number 242. While you're there, please explore the rest of the site, including our daily blog posts, discussion forums, and lots more. I also love hearing from you, so feel free to email me with any questions at lou at www.radio.com or if you want to be heard on the air, call the voicemail at 888-703-2171. Don't forget that in addition to the show, please come by and watch our weekly live video broadcast and chat every Wednesday night at 7.30 p.m. Eastern at www.newscast.com. Every week we discuss that week's Walt Disney World news in a live interactive discussion forum where you can ask and answer questions while the broadcast is going on. If you can't make the live newscast, you can watch it at youtube.com slash WDW Radio right on our blog, or I'll also put the audio in the iTunes feed as well. While you're on the WDW Radio site, be sure and check out our Disney Meets link where you can find out more information about WDW Radio Meets of the Month in Walt Disney World as well as other special events. You can also find links to follow me over on Twitter. I am at Lou Mangello. And please come by and join the WDW Radio Facebook friend page at facebook.com slash WDW Radio. Also be sure and visit celebrationspress.com. There you can find out how you can subscribe to and order back issues of Celebrations Magazine and now download a free sample PDF as well. Also, we're now taking pre-orders for our deluxe limited edition holiday special edition. It's a hardbound deluxe book with more than 120 pages of Disney Christmas magic, hundreds of color photos, and behind-the-scenes stories of the holiday celebrations past and present at Walt Disney World great way to sort of relive the holidays at the parks, the resorts, and so much more. It's available in early November for $24.95, but you can pre-order your copy now for the exclusive discount price of just $19.95 plus shipping. To learn more or to pre-order your copy of the limited edition book, visit celebrationspress.com. Big thanks to my partners and sponsors, including MEI and Mouse Fan Travel. They are my official and recommended travel provider. Whether you're going to Walt Disney World, Disneyland, Adventures by Disney, Disney Cruise Line, or anything else, Becky and her team of agents not only give you incredible service, the best possible discounts, but really the level of personal service all at no extra cost to you. They are over at mousefantravel.com. 
All-Star Vacation Homes generously provided our home base for the 40-hour show this weekend. They have more than 150 homes within just a couple of miles of Walt Disney World. They've got everything from private pools and spas and game rooms and kitchens to from two-bedroom condos up to seven-bedroom homes. You can visit them over at allstarvacationhomes.com. And if you want to stay right in the heart of Walt Disney World, the Walt Disney World Swan and Dolphin not only has the most comfortable heavenly beds anywhere, but 17 world-class restaurants and lounges this coming weekend They've got their second annual Food and Wine Classic, and they're just steps away from Epcot and the World Showcase and their Food and Wine Festival. For more information, visit them over at swananddolphin.com. As always, my friends, and I do believe that you are my friends, whether we have met yet or not, all I ask is that if you like the show, please help spread the word. Let others know about it. Tweet out that you're listening. Share the link to your favorite shows on Facebook or discussion forums or Google+. And please come by iTunes, rate and review the show, and the WW Radio apps there as well. Also, please don't forget that there's no time like right now to start taking those first steps towards pursuing your passion each and every day. And once you do, always keep moving forward. Thank you all again so very much for taking the time out of your busy schedule to listen each and every week. So until next time, have a great week, everybody. See ya. Hi, Lou. It's Meredith in Toronto. Big fan of the show. Your positivity, attention to detail, and all-around sense of community are really appreciated um, by this viewer in Can- and listener in Canada. I'm going to be in the world on for our, it's our Canadian Thanksgiving, October 7th to the 10th. And I'm just wondering if you're planning anything in terms of eating around the world at Epcot with the Food and Wine Festival, if you have anything planned. So... Let me know and let all of us know because uh, it would be great to meet you and Deanna and the whole gang in person and perhaps have some cheddar cheese soup at Canada and uh, other great treats. Um, so looking forward to your answer on the podcast or uh, you can drop me a quick email. Um, thanks, Lou. Bye. Hey, Lou. It's Catherine from Long Island calling from the beach of the Polynesian Village where I'm laying in a hammock having an awesome time. I know you love food, had some great snacks, had the carrot cake cookies, some school bread, and had dinner at Narcoozies, which is awesome, and we're going to Artist Point tonight, had a fabulous vacation, no lines, best thing ever, Um, I'm a first time mom, so this is my girl's trip out, my sister and myself and my friend, and we are loving it, what a wonderful time we've had, Um, love your show, listen to it all the time, and can't wait to hear what's coming on for next week, All right. hope your trip to Hawaii is good, bye bye. Hey, Lou, this is Sarah from Michigan calling. I just wanted to call and say hi, and thanks so much for all that you do. Um, I want to tell you that I specifically enjoy hearing all of those neat little audio clips that you insert into the radio shows each week. Um, I have a terrible visual memory, so when I when I hear a sound, um, it, it really takes me back, and I feel like I'm right there in Florida, so keep those coming. I love the variety. Um, those are really great. I also wanted to say that uh, we're getting excited for our wedding at the Wedding Pavilion um, in October. And I did want to tell you that I talked to my wedding coordinator about that rumor of moving the couples. They said that they've already contacted all of those couples that have been immediately affected by the Grand Floridian construction. And we weren't one of those. So I think we're okay for now with that. Um, but truthfully, wherever you get married in Walt Disney World, is uh, is going to be a great event nonetheless. So it it, it couldn't be too terrible. Um, but our, our wedding planning process has uh, been not so fairy tale. But with your shows, your newscasts, the contests, all of that really helps uh, keep me staying positive about our celebration. And I look forward to them every week. Um, so I just wanted to call and say hi that's about it and we'll see you at the 40 hour show get my box people shirt today in the mail and uh thanks so much again we'll see ya hey lou jen tremley from bristol connecticut just returned from my uh, trip to walt disney uh over the weekend we were down there from the uh, 17th to the 24th uh sorry i missed uh your meet of the month this month um, by a week or so. Um, I wish I was going to be down there for the uh, 40th celebration on the 1st, but uh, unfortunately I'm already back home and missing it already. 
Uh, we had a blast, as always. Uh, we took our niece down for her first time to celebrate her 16th birthday, and we just had an awesome, awesome week. Um, and like I said, I'm already going through my Disney withdrawals. So I'm just uh, catching up on a couple of your more recent uh, shows, uh, show 240 and 241. As always, great job. And uh, I just uh, took a peek at some of your videos from Alani, uh, which look amazing. Um, and hopefully one of these days maybe I'll get a chance to get out there as well since I've never been to Hawaii. Um, and now since Disney built their own property out there, it's just a better excuse for me to maybe try to get there someday. Um, anyway, uh, keep up the great work, and uh, I look forward to seeing your podcast for the 40th and seeing what else you have up your sleeve. Um, I did order the new Christmas uh, special book for Celebrations Magazine, so I'm looking forward to getting that in a couple months. And uh, I also pre-ordered your Frontierland CD for the audio guide, so again, I'm looking forward to getting that. So I uh, just wanted to call and say hi. It's been a couple weeks since I called in, and uh, I just, again, appreciate everything you do. Uh, have a great week. Bye-bye. You've got